Hey everybody, Jillian here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another Traveler's Notebook process video and in my spread today I am going to be summarizing what I took away from this book by Sharon Miller. It's called Nice, Why We Love to Be Liked and How God Calls Us to More. It's a really interesting read. I loved her first book and that's actually what prompted me to read the, her second book, Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my Traveler's Notebook insert here. This is probably going to be the last spread that I do in this little booklet. Even though I have some additional pages at the end, I just have so much bulk on the left side that it's, um, I think it's just time for me to move on. You can see it a bit here. So before I sat down to make this video, I looked through my stash and pulled out minimal supplies, including some alphabet stickers, clear stamps, acrylic paint, and alphabet stencil, and then I'll bring in some inks here in a moment. I'm going to start by stamping the title of the book using these Tim Holtz foam alpha stamps. I don't so much care for the impression that I get when I use ink with these, so instead I'm going to put on the thin layer of this acrylic paint from Target. The green was inspired by the book cover, and I think it goes well with the rest of the spread and the other colors that I've chosen to use today. So I just painted on a super thin layer of acrylic paint and then stamped that down. Next, I'm going to use the Fruit of the Spirit stamps from Illustrated Faith with Dayspring. Sharon's book uses a lot of fruit and tree imagery and metaphors, so I thought that this would be a great match. I recently swatched my inks and I'm so glad that I did so I'm able just to look at this sheet here with all of the inks that I own and can quickly pull out the inks that I want to use instead of having to individually swatch each color like I used to do. So I'm going to start by stamping this lemon off up in the top left and then writing um, the focus verse. So Sharon Miller uses Matthew 7.20 as a jumping off point for the book. It's near the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and he is pointing out that good trees don't produce bad fruit, and bad trees don't produce good fruit. He says in verse 20, thus you will recognize them by their fruits. So I'm choosing to use some alpha stickers, number stickers, and then the journal crush stamp to go ahead and get that verse down here up towards the top. Then I'm going to go back in with some more of these journal crush stamps just to get some journaling lines down. And then I'm going to go in with the definition of nice. So what does it look like to be nice? And I'm going to use the Vanessa Alpha stencil here to go ahead and, and kind of title this section. So Sharon says, Niceness is concerned with the appearance of goodness, not the reality of it. It is a social lubricant to navigate conflict and facilitate relationships that really stood out to me. She goes on to say, The false virtue of niceness only makes us into whitewash tombs, pristine on the outside but empty within. And then so for the next portion of the book, she kind of breaks down those fruits. What are the fruits of niceness? And so I'm going to document that down on the bottom left here. I'm going to use some purple alpha stickers to kind of make another title. This was a really great exercise in comprehension. So I typically, when I read like a nonfiction book, will go through with a pencil or a highlighter or something and highlight and underline and even make notes or draw little stars. And so it was really great um, kind of going back through this book and looking at all of those things that I had underlined and then having a place to kind of process them again. Um, I don't know about you, but I certainly retain things when I write them down. Like when I was <laughs> in middle school, if I had a good grade on my spelling test or my vocab quiz, it was probably because I spent some serious time just copying <laughs> my spelling words or writing out those definitions over and over. And so I feel like this is just the grown-up version <laughs> of that. So some of the fruits of niceness, she says, are inauthenticity, corruption, cowardice, cynicism, self-righteousness, and sentimentality. And their fruit is fake, rotten, bland, bitter, hard, and processed. Um, so that was kind of eye-opening. I hadn't necessarily connected some of those dots, but I really um, appreciated reading through that and was even convicted a little bit about some things that I had allowed to kind of blossom in my own life. I just numbered each of those fruits on the left, one through six, and as a way to bring some more color in there, I grabbed a Neo Color Crayon in like a coordinating color and just colored in those little number circles so it looked a little more interesting. So now moving over to the right side of the spread, and this is kind of like the resolution part of the book. She talks about cultivating a better tree and then unpacks some disciplines to do that. 
So each title for the chapters in this section said grow original, grow deep, grow less, grow wild, and I remembered that I had this Allie Edwards grow story stamp, and so I knew I wanted to stamp the word grow down and then use some colorful different size font alpha stickers for each portion here. In her book, she encourages us to grow original, to conform to Christ instead of the crowd. She encourages us to grow less. She asks, which idol is shaping my message and my life more than Christ? And then she unpacks the discipline of obedience. So this was a really helpful, practical section. And you might have noticed on this side of the spread, I'm using the strawberry stamps again, but I'm combining both the solid portion of the strawberry stamp with like the outline. So the little strawberry on the left is just boring and black and white, and then the strawberries over on the right are bright and vibrant and eye-catching. And so I thought that was a fun little twist. <laughs> So I'm just about done with my spread here. I'm going to go ahead and spell out the last portion, grow wild, get my notes down. And then the very last piece that I'll include was perhaps like the biggest, most impactful takeaway. She talks about um, cultivating fruit that lasts. And she shares the story of these two women who were martyrs for their faith. They were second century Christians who were persecuted to the point of death because they wouldn't recant their belief in Christ. And... Oh man, she says, do not normalize lukewarm faith. Nothing amplifies our words and establishes our authority more than the megaphone of sacrifice. People will listen to just about anything we have to say if we're willing to give up everything for it. So essentially, half-hearted faith is not compelling. And I love how that ties into what we're now starting to work through together as a community in the wholehearted devotional kit from Illustrated Faith. So I'm excited to get back to working in that next. That will probably be the next process video that I share. But before then, here's a finished look at my page along with a couple of close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you soon.